What is up, wonderful world of YouTube? Back at it with another kind of mariachi video. So most of the people who follow my channel, you see my collection. I'm, you know, I'm a bit of a collector. I like to collect Lego, you know, action figures, instruments. I'm also kind of a huge Star Wars fan. And uh, today, uh, it's Friday, Friday the 27th of July, something like that. Uh, we got an announcement that Mark Hamill is coming back to Star Wars uh, Episode Nine. Now. I just, I'm kind of breaking the mold of my channel here to talk about Star Wars because, you know, I'm just going to jump on this hype train for a little bit because I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. I've been a fan ever since I was about 10 years old. Uh, before that, you know, Batman pretty much occupied most of my, most of my uh, a fan appreciation existence. But right around when I was 10, in the mid-90s, they had re-released Star Wars into theater. And I had never really cared about Star Wars. It was just something that I saw on TV from time to time. And I was like, you know, I don't know what this is. But then I saw it in the theater. Totally effed up my mind. Okay, you got spaceships, lightsabers, Darth Vader, a hot chick with, you know, buns in her head. It was it was overwhelming for my 10-year-old brain to, to wrap my mind around, right? So I've been a fan pretty much since then. I've been collecting stuff the last, you know, eight to ten years, you know, right about as I was getting out of college and starting to actually make some money and not be poor. Um, I've been a real huge collector of, of, like, Star Wars Legos and stuff like that. But, yeah, this came through my Facebook today. A buddy of mine tagged me in this post that Star Wars Episode Nine cast announced. Now, at first I thought because of the, the this madre that uh, episode 8 has been, I thought, who gives a shit? Who cares? I don't, I don't particularly care, right? But I started, I read the article. I'm going to read a little bit of it here just for, for, for folks that are, you know, on my Facebook and, you know, on YouTube. Returning cast members include Daisy Risley, Risley, Riley, Ridley. I can't say that. Adam Driver, John Boyega, Oscar, uh, all the new people, all right? All the new people that nobody likes. They're also being joined by veteran Star Wars actors Mark Hamill, Anthony Daniels, and Billy D. Williams as Lando Calrissian. And, okay, I mean, that's cool. It's cool that Mark Hamill's coming back after all the shitstorm that Disney has been throwing his way about, you know, how they really bastardized his character and made him into some creepy degenerate old, you know, shell of what he is supposed to be as Luke Skywalker. And they can't seem to understand that when you take archetypes that are very effective, like Luke Skywalker, he's a classic archetype of a hero character from, you know, an early novice neophyte to struggling with, you know, real things in life, contesting with challenges, facing his fears, and then becoming a master, and then a grandmaster, right? Disney doesn't seem to understand that when you fuck with those things, people are going to get a little pissed off. But anyways, continuing. Composer John Williams, A+, plus, John Williams has to be in Star Wars. Produced by Kathleen Kennedy, J.J. Abrams, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the gist of it is, is that an official announcement by Lucasfilm Disney, Luke Skywalker is coming back, which makes me think, why did they even bother to kill off his character? You know, And if you haven't seen it and I'm spoiling it for you, I, I don't care. Um... The big thing here in the article is they're talking about Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher. They have permission from uh, Carrie Fisher's family and her daughter, Billy. Their way to honor her is to not CG her character like they did with Tarkin, which I didn't think was that bad in Rogue One. I mean, the guy's been dead for 20 years. What do you think is going to have to happen? They're going to take, and they're not recasting her either, which is, you know, perfect. I'm like, if you're going to recast her, what the hell? And they're going to take footage, unseen filmed footage from The Force Awakens. And that, I don't know if Episode 8 footage is going to be used, but they just say Force Awakens in the article. And they're going to shoot around the already filmed, unseen footage of Carrie Fisher. And I'm just thinking, you know... They obviously didn't have a story arc, or if they did, they had to chuck it out the window because now they have to basically film all of her scenes around previously shot footage, and they're going to have to have the actors react to those to that dialogue and ask her and interact with her based off of stuff that they've already filmed. To me, I like this. You know, the fact that they're not going to replace Carrie Fisher. She's one of the strongest, you know, next to Ellen Ripley and Sarah Connor. 
you know, one of the strongest female characters, you know, in, in our, you know, repertoire of movies and, and, and genre and film, they can't just replace her, all right? She's irreplaceable. Some people are truly irreplaceable. So it'll be interesting. It'll be either be a homage, something that's very nice to Carrie Fisher, or it'll probably be something that's obviously dubbed and not good, right? It'll, if it's very obvious that Carrie Fisher's not in the scene with these people, it'll be it'll be painfully obvious, and I'm a, I'm a little worried about that. So that's the big news for Star Wars. I'm hi- I'm jumping on the hype train, uh, talking about Star Wars. Like everybody on YouTube is probably talking about the same shit, but I wanted to get that quick out of the way. I also wanted to talk about, I'm holding my viuela here, this is my uh, first Morales viuela for my mariachi fan, you know, viewers and stuff like that. I do play viuela, that's mostly what I practice when I'm learning stuff or trying to, you know, keep my, keep my ish together. Um, I wanted to talk about how Star Wars to me is very analogous, very similar to how mariachi is to a lot of us. And I think that's probably why most mariachi people that I've met in my life are also really big into Star Wars. In Star Wars, you have this idea of apprentice all the way through to master, right? And it's something where, as a as a youngling, you are sensitive to the Force. You you are born with certain gifts and abilities that you can connect to the Force, and so you you know you get interest in or you get identified, you know, at a very young age, and you go into an apprentice, you know program. Not really a program, but an apprenticeship, nonetheless, where you're learning all the small aspects of the Force and the Jedi, or even if it's the Sith, you know, you start very young and you apprentice your way through it. It's very similar to how you learn mariachi music. And this is two things that I love dearly. These are my, you know, I compose most of my life around playing mariachi music, reading Star Wars, you know, lore, playing the games, collecting all the shit, watching the original movies and even now the prequels a little bit with the Clone Wars. Now that the Clone Wars is back, that's that's gonna be fun. And it's not back in, you know, that they've re remade new shit. It had two more seasons before they ended that thing with Disney. So they're just pulling it out of the archives saying, here, here's some here's some mierda for you guys. But it's good mierda. Here, take it, take it, buy it, buy our streaming service, please. Luke is coming back. That's what's pissing me off most about this whole Disney Star Wars thing is that they're just really bastardizing the culture. Um, what were they talking about? Mariachi. Okay. So, it's analogous to mariachi because when I was very young, um, you know, like maybe four, four or five years old, I started displaying an interest in music. Uh, when I was like three and a half, four years old, I was reaching for anything that even resembled a guitar. I'm just like, I want to play guitar. I want to play. I want to play. And so, it was very early on when I was a kid they, did, they, they saw that I had the interest in music, that I had the talent and the potential to learn music. And so by the time I was in about fourth grade, uh, is when I started picking up my first real instrument. It was a violin. I didn't teach guitar. But that's really where it started. I started very young, like you do in Star Wars, as an apprentice, right? And you have, all the way up in mariachi, you have masters and grandmasters in, in the mariachi genre. You know, you have like Pepe Martinez you know, uh, that ran Mariachi Vargas for, you know, half of his life, if not more. <clears throat> you have Naticano, who was, you know, you know a master, you know, at, at violin and ran a group for, you know, 50 years plus. A lot of legendary players in the genre. And then you have, you know, like the Knights, the Jedi Knights, you know, like, like you know, I kind of consider myself kind of like a, you know, kind of like a, you know, a Jedi Knight, you know, not, not quite an Anakin Skywalker. I'm, I'm not... I'm not that talented, you know, I'm not a, a master, kind of like how Obi-Wan Kenobi was when he was just a Jedi Knight with the, with the Jedi mullet, you know, trying to wrangle around this this annoying little bratty kid called named Anakin. You know, Obi-Wan is my favorite Star Wars character, and that's kind of how I, I see mariachi music, is you start young, you apprentice, either through a school or a youth group. You get immersed in the culture. You learn all the little things from, okay, put your fingers here, this fret, that fret. <laughs> oh, okay, well, let's try this one again. And and you go all the way through from your first couple of pieces, your first performances, to the point where you're almost in, you're in high school now or if you're in middle school and you're wearing the full trake and you're going through your trials just like in the Star Wars, the Jedi go through their trials. And it becomes your whole life. 
it becomes everything that you do. You know, everything. Are you going to go to this party? Are you going to go do this? Are you going to, you know, distract yourself from school? No, I'm playing gigs. I have gigs Friday, Saturday. I have church on Sunday. You know, we have fundraisers. We have tortillas. All this stuff that we're doing. I'm playing concerts. You know, you're you're a Padawan. You know, trying to progress your way to becoming a Jedi Knight. You know. And then when you get out of high school and you go through the college level and you really dedicate yourself to learning music theory and, 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 and playing gigs and learning the culture and taking on work and, you know, dealing with difficult people and difficult clients and playing in restaurants and just having to take requests on end, you know, you're becoming your, becoming your way on to a Jedi Knight. And then you have the point where you become kind of a master. You know, you become so good. And you have so much knowledge and you have so much ability. You know, maybe you write, you know, you arrange, you, you run a group, you're a director, you play seven instruments, you know, you and you play them, you know, at a concert level and you've gone to school and you're a true master of your craft, right? Just like, you know, a master Jedi would be in a Jedi Order. You know, that's kind of how I see things with the comparison between Star Wars and Marigachi music. And, and I would hate, I hate, you know, the idea that you would you know, overly commercialize mariachi music or bastardize mariachi music, make it something artificial and intangible, kind of how I feel they're doing with Star Wars these days. They're just putting it on a t-shirt, trying to sell, you know, whack stuff, and it's like no one's buying it, right? And if, you know, if you're a whack, you know, musician, if you don't learn and you don't practice and you don't spend hours trying to perfect, you know, your, your talent and your technique and your craftsmanship... No one's going to hire that. No one's going to buy it, right? No one's, you're going to see right through you. So yeah, guys, I just wanted to kind of get on a quick video rant. It's Friday. I just got off of work. They're announcing Star Wars shit. I'm just like, I don't care, but I still got I still want to read it, but I still kind of don't care. And then I'm thinking about this whole thing where it's like, you know, I love Star Wars. I love mariachi music. They kind of have similar, you know, um, paths that you see in the mythology and that's why Star Wars is so effective and so powerful to so many people is that there's a natural progression a story and an archetype and it's the same with playing mariachi music I'm sure a lot of you guys probably agree even if you're not Star Wars fans you probably remember a time when you were in 6th grade or in 8th grade or your first high school performance or your first concert or your first time on stage and just stepping up and you know, it's like the first time wielding a lightsaber. You know, you get a higuela in your hand for the first time. You have to appreciate it. You know, don't go down the dark side path, becoming Darth Vader, trying to wield all the power. You know, you have to really be amiable and, and share what you know. And try to defend against things that are whack. You know, that's, that's the best I can say. All right, guys. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you guys like what I'm doing and just a quick off the wall personal video about you know Star Wars, I got my my you know my Star Wars. This is my favorite around the house you know Star Wars shirt. Um, yeah, leave a comment if you guys are Star Wars fans like me. What's your favorite Star Wars character? If you're not a Star Wars fan and you're like oh it's just a movie, then I'm sure you can appreciate the comparison of you know all your trials that you've gone through playing. And well, if you, if you don't have if you don't have any trials and you just kind of stayed where you're at, well, you know, I'm sorry, we're probably not going to be the best of friends. I don't mean to diss you. You know, we all we all have to go through what we go through. So if you guys like this, please subscribe. It's helping my channel. My channel's growing, and I just want to say to my viewers. I mean, I only got like I got less than a thousand viewers, which I'm very grateful for that you guys are subscribed and are watching my shit, and it's awesome. You know, in YouTube, you know, world where you have multimedia and. All this real big stuff, you know, I'm trying to get onto YouTube and just drown everybody out. I think what I like most about YouTube are people just making real videos and just, you know, this is a medium that we can talk talk you through and, you know, share ideas and I'm hoping to do more. So if you want to support the channel, you know, please like, comment, you know, give suggestions, you know, engage in the conversation. And uh, it helps the channel because the more people are watching my videos and liking and subscribing, you know, YouTube's algorithm is not hard to figure out, okay? Everyone's like, oh, this mysterious, mystery algorithm. Like, no. But the videos and the channels that get the most traffic, the most attention, it's just like in fucking high school. You get the most attention, you're gonna get, you know, you're gonna get shown up in everybody's feed, right? YouTube is about keeping people on YouTube, viewing YouTube videos, clicking on YouTube links, so that advertisers can take that data and say, Okay, we're going to pay you this number of dollars. And so we're going to bring that to YouTube 
is going to get, you know, the most attention. So please like, please subscribe. If you don't like my shit, that's fine. I'm not going to take it personally. And, you know, this is just me being me here. So thanks a lot. Peace. Peace. <laughs>